I'm Peter Block in Washington, D.C., and it is day three at TCT. I'm here for On the Scene, and with me is Deepak Bhatt. And the centerpiece, of course, of TCC is always the late-breaking clinical trials. Today we want to talk about the three important ones that came through today, the BRIGHT trial, ISAR triple, and security. So let's start with BRIGHT, Deepak. Uh, BRIGHT is anticoagulation in MI. Uh, people have talked about this whole bivalirudin versus oh, heparin yeah. versus uh, something else. So are we finally going to put this to rest? Well, I don't know. I think it's a great trial. It is an, a STEMI trial and a non-STEMI trial. So patients having a myocardial infarction, undergoing PCI, randomized to heparin alone, heparin plus a 2B3 inhibitor or bival. And for the primary endpoint, it looked like a clear win for bival rudin with a very significant reduction in bleeding versus heparin plus 2B3, but also versus heparin. And this is despite the fact that 80% or so of the patients got a radial approach. Yeah, and you know, bivalirudin costs a little bit more than heparin, but repetitively, bivalirudin seems to be the winner in these trials, so can we finally say, look, can we get over it? Right, and here there was no excess in stent thrombosis. Yeah. That had been a concern in a couple of the other yeah. recent STEMI trials with bival. So in this trial, it looked really good. Okay, so let's move on. ISAR triple. ISAR triple yes. is an interesting trial, short versus long-term triple therapy in patients who have been stented with a drug eluting stent who need to have, who also have AF and who need obviously to have uh, dual antiplatelet therapy plus anticoagulation. Right. And ISAR triple tells us now that it really doesn't make any difference. Short term six weeks is as good as six months and it is equivalent, doesn't make any difference. I think the message here for me, Deepak, is if you're going to do something, you only have to do it for six weeks. That's right. a good news. I agree with you, and the WOST trial also suggested that a shorter duration might be okay. So I think, uh, though it was a very different design, so I think six weeks, six months, I'd go with the six-week regimen, yes. with the caveat that this was about 600 patients in the study, so relatively modest size. There are some much larger trials on the topic that are ongoing, but it'll be a few years before those trials report. Yeah, and I have to add that this is anticoagulation with vitamin K antagonists. So that's uh, right. some of the novel new anticoagulants were not used, and that's for another Day, but for now, I think this is important information. Yep. So let me move on to security and ask All you, right. uh, you know, double anti, anti, double antiplatelet therapy, short term, long term. Once again, that question is uh, confronted. What's your take? Well, this was six months versus 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy in a relatively low risk elective PCI population. But within that context, there didn't seem to be any benefit of doing 12 months instead of six months. So uh, with second generation drug eluting stents. So again, confirming a number of recent modest sized trials, it doesn't appear that longer durations of DAPT are better than shorter durations, at least with second generation drug eluting stents in low risk elective PCI. You know, I think we're learning that this long term stuff that we all started out worrying about and saying, oh my God, we have to do it for at least a year, is just simply not coming true. I agree, though again with the caveat that there are some trials, some that should report pretty soon about DAPT and various durations. So more to come, but for the time being, it does seem that shorter durations are okay in low-risk patients, low-risk PCI. So those are the blade breakers for day number three.